Today, no voice need go unheard. Ordinary people are armed with the belief that they are not alone. Through the power of Facebook, Twitter and even WikiLeaks, thousands of voices have joined together to bring countries to their knees. Is this force a new phenomenon? 50 years ago, Amnesty International launched one of the first ever social networks of activists in the world. Be of good comfort. We have today lit such a candle as shall never be put out. Since 1961, people across the globe have joined forces and demanded action on over 44,000 cases. Peter Benenson sparked a movement of three million people into life from his barrister's office in London. I was spurred into that by reading an article about how two Portuguese students had been uh, arrested and sentenced to imprisonment for drinking a toast to liberty in a Lisbon restaurant. That so outraged me at the time and then I walked up the steps of St. Martin's in the Fields Church out of the underground and went in to see what could really be done effectively to mobilize world opinion. Long before Facebook, before mobile phones or emails, letters have crossed the world demanding justice for people in urgent need, messages from people they've never met. Again and again, we reiterate that the release of political prisoners is the most important thing for all those who, wish to truly, who truly wish to bring about change in Burma. For over 20 years, Amnesty members campaigned for Aung San Suu Kyi to win back her freedom. When Václav Havel was imprisoned in 1979 simply for his beliefs, a worldwide network of activists refused to forget about him. When he left jail, Václav Havel eventually became president of a new Czech Republic. When thousands across Eastern Europe tore down the barriers that held them apart, grandmothers, students and businessmen around the globe united together in support. Their faxes helped break down brick walls and knew no borders. Today, in many countries, people still risk their lives to gather and speak out against regimes that rule them at gunpoint. A million supporters have already signed Amnesty's demand for an international arms trade treaty so we can keep the weapons out of their hands for good. Fear comes in many forms. Today, millions living in poverty know that losing your freedom can mean living without a voice, without food, and in constant fear. Mothers in Sierra Leone are standing up for their right to live without fear of death during childbirth, after joining a campaign to make free health care a reality. A worldwide campaign made sure the Mexican government could no longer ignore women and children being murdered in their hundreds in Ciudad Juarez. Su miedo, tenemos temor, pero luchamos por eso. In the next 12 months, Amnesty members will join the fight for women and girls' rights in Nicaragua in support of rape victims who are currently forbidden from seeking abortion. Elsewhere in Latin America, Amnesty's work will never be forgotten by victims of torture and repression by regimes now long dead. In 1975, Amnesty helped convince the UN to act. May I take it that the Assembly wishes to adopt the Convention against torture and other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment? It is so decided. Two years later, worldwide recognition came with the award of the Nobel Peace Prize. Not everyone was so impressed. Scathing criticisms of amnesty activists were hurled everywhere, from the US to Soviet Russia. 
Undaunted, over a million people signed petitions to the UN to free all prisoners of conscience. 31 years ago, Amnesty members began a relentless fight against the death penalty, which has helped end executions in 87 countries. Au nom de ses amis à travers le monde, je vous demande, Monsieur le Président, de libérer Kim Song Man. Keep your spirit up. And it's only when you have millions of people coming together and the hard research and evidence that Amnesty brings to bear, that combination is what's going to crack the challenges of the future. Millions of ordinary people have already joined forces to make sure Guantanamo will not be hidden from view. To shine a light on the forgotten prisoners of China. To create an international criminal court where no one can hide from the law. With a 50-year head start, and a network of supporters in over 150 countries. The question is, what will we do next?